If you have any questions about your TV repair, please leave a comment in the comment section below this video. Be sure to include your TV brand, TV model number, and the symptoms and problems that your TV is showing. This information will help us to best diagnose the problem with your TV and suggest a fix. We will reply to your message as quickly as we can. After we reply to your comment, you should receive a notification in your email account. Be sure to check the social and promotion tabs and the spam folder in your email. Thanks and we look forward to assisting you on your TV repair journey. This video shows how to install a component repair kit on an SS board for the following Panasonic TV models. TC-50PU54 TC-P50U50 TC-P50UT50 the Panasonic part number for this board is TXNSS1SDUU. The board number you will find on the actual board itself is TNPA5623AB. Always be sure to match part numbers on your current board with your replacement board or replacement repair kit to be sure they are compatible. This component repair kit includes all necessary components to repair common failures on this SS board. Symptoms include that the TV will not power on and that your LED light is blinking eight times. This kit also includes five new Panasonic screws. These screws are intended to hold the board in place on the TV panel. The originals were not equipped with lock washers, causing the screws to loosen and to short out the board. As you can see on the image, we have highlighted the different components that we will be removing and installing replacements for. Each of the components in your repair kit will be individually labeled with their component location number on the board. The component location number identifies where the component is placed on the board. The equipment and tools that we use in this tutorial are recommended for the repair of this board. Each person may use different tools according to their own skill level and preference. We will start by using a preheater below the board to help heat up some of the components that we will be removing on the board. First we will use a hot air tool to heat up the first component and loosen it from the board. I will attach my tweezer to one of the legs and as the component loosens I will pull it from the board. I will now clean up the solder off the board using my soldering iron and some solder wick. Hold the wick flat against the board and apply pressure with the iron and the wick will suck up the solder. This will leave the board clean for your replacement component. After I've removed that component, I will now clean up the pads on the board. We will use some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip to clean up these pads. Next, we will move over to a smaller component at R051. When removing this component, be sure to not heat up any of the components nearby as that may damage or loosen them unnecessarily from the board. Once again, I will use my heat gun to warm up the component and then my tweezers to remove the component from the board once it has loosened. Once again, I will remove the remaining solder using my iron and some solder wick. Before removing the two components on the heat sink, I'm going to reinstall the two components that we just removed. I will start by putting a dab of solder paste onto each of the pads for this smaller component. Then I will use my tweezers to put the component in place. When warming with my hot air gun, I will use the tweezers to hold the component in place while I warm up the first side.
After both sides have been connected and hardened to the board, I will use a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol to once again clean up. Moving over to the other component, I will use a small dab of solder paste right in the center of where the component will go. This component requires that it is installed in a certain direction. On this chip, the circle must be matched up with the number one on the board. I will use my tweezers to hold the component in place while I heat it up with my heat gun. The solder paste will liquefy and then you can allow it to harden and secure the component in place. Next we will solder the components to the board. I am going to apply some solder flux to the pads and legs. Then I will add a little bit of solder onto my iron and then run it across the pins to solder the component to the board on the first side. We will then do the same thing on the other side. Add a little bit of flux, then add some solder to my iron and then run the solder over the pins. Once again, after the component has hardened and is connected to the board, I will clean it with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. Next, we are going to remove the two components which are connected to the heatsink. We will flip the board over and locate the solder points for the legs on the back of the board. We will use a desolder gun with a vacuum to desolder the three pins on each of the components. Hold the desolder gun tip on the point and then move it around a bit. Once the solder heats up and liquefies, you can activate the vacuum to suck up the solder from each of the connections. After we have desoldered both components, we will then flip the board back over to the top side and then unscrew each of the components using a Phillips screwdriver. Then I will use my needle nose pliers to wiggle loose each of the components from the board. After removing these components, you can wipe down the heatsink to remove any of the existing heatsink compound. Next, you will want to compare the existing component with the new one and bend the legs on the new one to match the existing component. This will allow the legs to go through the holes on the board. You can either add heatsink compound to the component before or after you slide the legs through the holes. Then you can use a screwdriver to attach the components to the heatsink. After you've attached the components to the heatsink, flip the board back over to the back side and use your solder and iron to solder the legs to the board. After you're done soldering, clip the excess legs just above where the solder ball is. This will help to keep the legs from touching the TV panel and causing more problems. After this, you have replaced the components that are included in this kit and you can reinstall your board into your TV. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. If you have any further questions regarding your repair, 
Simply post a question in the comment section below. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends to help us spread the savings. And don't forget to hit that like button.